So here's the deal, people. It's a stretch of river. I've not even found it before. And um, looked at the map, still couldn't find it. Previously, when I went in the winter, it was flooded, the whole field, and I couldn't get, even get to where I thought the river was. I found it. Guy told me about it. He said, yeah, just keep walking and walking and walking. I found it. It's here. I've got a couple of hours. I'm going to give it a go purely because the conditions look pretty good for picking up a pike, but they also tell me there might be chance for a perch. I mean, that looks really with chub down there. I dare say it's not. There's a nice pool here. I've no idea. I've got a feel it's going to be snaggy, but along this stretch is about... Looks about six good swims. So I'm going to give it a go. I've got um, small roach, really, really small roach here. Just so you can see, tiny little roach, not, you know, almost perch size, really. And I'll show you more in my... I'll show you more in the shape of my hand. Small, barbless hook, little piece of rubber, a band cut there to hold it on there. I'm going to twitch away and I'm sure to lose it and after that I can go to spinner bait. So basically it's getting near the end of the season you can see just a very slight flush of colour on the uh, willows, the little buds just starting to come and yes as the rivers get in good condition that's when the season here in the UK generally shuts like middle of March -ish, and I'm here in middle of February. So I've got to give it a go because it does look pretty fishy. Wouldn't be my ideal size of bait really but it is what it is that was all the guy had so we'll just have a flick around and see i'd be very surprised there's not a pike in here but who knows one guy did say watch the banks graham it's very uh, easy to go in there apparently this crumbles away down there and it seems about three feet there if that so i'm just going to tweak it around there's one snag oh my god that was living dangerously but I'm probably going to lose a lot of gear here. But it just looks so fishy, I cannot not sort of have a throw there. Yeah, it doesn't look that deep actually. Probably three feet, I would guess. Anybody the local probably goes, oh, he's wasting his time fishing there. say so not knowing the swims is a makes it a huge lottery a for snags and b for just finding fish i kind of think there'd be a pike or something underneath that floating reed mat where well, there's a snag there i can feel it snagging oh god pike just swelled at it i'm almost sure i just saw a flash people oh he's got it here we go small one We'll try him early. He's on. Oh, not that small. <laughs> what was that? Third cast. That's a nice pike. I thought it was about two pounds. Oh no, not the snags. I can see my dead bait there. Come on. Oh, he's right in the top. What if he comes off? It doesn't matter. A fish. Wow, that was some result there. He's not done yet. I oh, know I got him. You guys tell me, what was that? Second cast? He looks like it was going to ping off. Oh, that hook's just hanging there. Get in. He's in. He's in. Oh. Oh, I actually pike fished on another part of the river. Oh, is that hooking or is that hooking? It's just hanging there, people. In fact, that's a... Oh, oh, it fell out. There you go. Normally an otter grabs them by the back of the tail. With this one, got a sort of mark there on the side. Oh, here comes the pike police. Probably got the wrong size mat or hook or something. Brilliant pleased with that and there we go pike number one do you know what i hate to say i feel lucky i've already spiked my finger on his gill covers let's get it back i feel there might be another one you can see 
I'm also his first victim as well. So people have got a bait there, and here's something worth looking at, look. Easy in the excitement of the fishing to miss that. That line there is tangled back around us. So you've got to untwist that and make sure it's straight to the swivel so it sits like that. Just another little tip. Here's another tip. Put that bait straight back there. And I did say I thought there might be something under that weed mat, if you remember. I don't even know if you might have seen that underneath the flash up down there. So exciting twitching baits like this. It's not, it's just somehow it's not the same. Oh, that was close. I forgot the currents changed there. That was lucky. Now, which way is this current going? It's, it's sort of hitting the hitting the bank and swirling it around a little bit. I guess any pipe is going to sit where the river comes here and then turns. That's a snag. When it's moving, it's a big ass snag. That could be good night, Vienna. I'll try and pull this down here. See if it will move. I've probably lost this lot. Guys, a tip. If you are pulling for a break, or trying, having lived dangerously a couple of times in my life, keep that away from you, especially on stretchy type, cheaper mono. Because if that suddenly comes free and I turn my head away from it, oh, I've got my bait back and that. And that's the reason I'm using strong line, so that I can pull things out the way. I'm sure to lose gear, sure to. Then we go again, that's not very deep. It looks a lot deeper than it is. Could just make the bait out down there. And don't be afraid to come tight into the bank. It's very often a pike will lay right up underneath that bank. Not this bank, any bank. I've never fished it before, so what do I know? I'm no expert. I'll just catch a fish. I'll leave all that to the uh, experts for their expert knowledge. I just go fishing and catch a fish. That's the object of the exercise. So basically I'm just trying to... Look, there I've got the water coming towards me so I could twitch it a little bit quicker. And this way, the current is going that way. It's going to hold that bait up in the water a little bit more so I can actually almost pause it a sort of millisecond longer. I still want it dodging and weaving about. I don't necessarily want it spinning monotonously at the same speed. I bet there's some big pike in here somewhere, people, honestly. Got that sort of, got that sort of look. Nice, nice, you know, rubbish mat down there. My goodness, that looks pretty good. Almost want to rush down there and throw a bait in. That's gone right underneath there. That should have pike written all over that. Right, I'm going to get back to you people if I get another take. So you see that rubbish mat there, and the current's going this way. So I'm going to try and drop my bait about four feet up from it and let, as it sinks, let it try and swing underneath that, that rubbish mat. I mean, it's a classic place for a chub shoal to sit up underneath that, and I'm sure there might be fish under there. But very often a pike will also lay under there and just zoom out. Because if they're there, they're not in the sun up here. So it's not like they've got the glare of the sun in their eyes. Down there, they can see more because it's dark. Nothing at home. Of course you run the risk of snags, but I'm hoping any snags push that way, any branches will be in the water have gone back that way. And then they just hang and twitch just in front of that weed mat. 
it appears that there is nobody at home. I've got to watch these banks, that guy was right. I can see how these would collapse. So I can, I can let the current just take it right back almost underneath that weed mat. I've got one. Oh, oh God, there's anglers and there's danglers. Oh my God. I came and walked on this stretch, found it last night. I thought the color's good. It looks so overgrown, there's got to be pike in there. And indeed, it appears there is. Probably the same size as the first one. Wow, was that a smart session. Wanted to come and have a go at this. A learning curve, obviously. A learning curve if I go in. Where's the end reverse on this? Then he's got one. What a reel. Oh, he's just hanging there. He's just hanging there. He's in now. Don't twist up. No, don't twist up. And this, folks, is why I use singles. Don't like trebles. They just, in fact, that hook's coming up there. It's gone in the in the mesh. So there we go. Another fine river pike. I'll take that the other way. Wow. There we go, folks. Another nice pike, right under that mat, right in tight in the corner there. Wow, I've got to get to the next swim, let's get him back. I've got to get that hook out first. Well, that's two pike out of the first swim, as it were. On to the next one. Well, Jungleville. But there appears to be a side stream coming in here from an exceedingly expensive looking landscaped house up there. <laughs> That's definitely no fishing zone, I can imagine. But I've got to try just down this run here. And then it's sort of slacker over there where that bit of ditch area is. I don't know if it's a main river that just splits or, or what it is, to be honest. But we'll just have a flick and see if we can See if anybody is at home. Very occasionally there are fish on the edge of the fast water. That's a, I'd say too fast for the pike, that's my opinion. Also, look at all that rubbish there, there's a good chance there's gonna be some of those branches in the, in the water here. gonna to have to start it back oh straight in and straight out goodness me with all those snags in there's gonna be some fish about but how on earth you get to them and get them out is beyond me I'm not sure I can't see the bottom over there I might try it from a different angle up here and uh, take the shot off I'm fancy in there though Right from this angle. I think that's relatively shallow there, but you never know if Mr. Pike is at home. Mr. Snag is. I'm off. Should be one down here, just on this corner, about there. Now I'm fancying this little run off there. <clears throat> the pike could lay just off the edge of that crease there, on the edge of the current. Looking to zoom out, grab something, and then swing back into his, his little ambush point. Oh, 
Right. Let's just try down there. I'm going to let it swing under that tree there. Again. There's a question of who dares wins. A little bit too pacey. No, let's go back over there. So I'll get back to you guys if I do have a take. Well, wow. it sort of narrows down there, so that's going to be possibly a no-go, but it's an open-out area here. Absolutely no shortage of snags. I'm fancying a little hole over there and just down the inside here. Let's get that leaf off. About there. I'm going to let it sink and come back in. Anywhere down here with that. Oh yeah, it seems a bit deeper there. Now I think I'm going to work this edge of this bank along here first. It's where I'd be if I was a pike. Try that one. That one was living dangerously, Graham. It's a little bit too pacey there where it picks up, but I have had pike like that before. That's not one of them, that's weed or a snag, it's weed. Generally, it's where the uh, current pauses more, slows up a little bit. Imagine a pike, he doesn't want to be sitting in the main current like a barber will be. He's not going to sit there fighting the current all the time. Oh, nearly, nearly, there. You better fish that one out. Yeah, snag there. Kind of amazed there's nobody at home here. I move from literally there where I was standing to here and I've got a pick up. Oh, he's off. That, what the hell was that? Oh my God, it's not a tooth mark on, on that at all. Don't say that was a perch. Goodness me. Oh, that, that's the end of that one. Oh, got it off. How lucky was that? Well, that's a real violent take. Big fish, big fish, big fish, guys. I struck it straight away, just grabbed it. It's been a small fish, it's a good one. Oh, oh, he's up in the bushes, Jesus. Come out, nice fish. I don't think that's the one I lost. Here he comes. I'm oh, sorry he didn't get all the fight of that, but I feel he's gonna thrash around. No, he's not that big, he's about sixes and sixes and sevens. Wow, that other fish was a weird take I had. I'm wondering if it was a trout, there wasn't a tooth mark on it. Come on babe, you're nice and quiet at the moment. He's in. Oh yeah, he's bigger than the others. Yeah, that's a nice one. He's got a leech on that one, I'll show that to you. Nah, I thought you'd go nuts then. I thought you would. Just wait. Just wait. Just one tweak, and he's out. Now, he had a leech on him. There, folks, is the leech that they get in the winter. But that, you can see that is a nice one. Get a better picture for you. You know, that other one, I wonder if it's either a big chub or maybe it could have been a trout because there wasn't a tooth mark on that bait. And this one came in other than initially going. Okay, calm down. This one's definitely been feeding because you've got a fat belly. There we go. 
Wow, what a session. I've not even been here 45 minutes. <laughs> Goodness me. What I've got to make sure to do is probably put this film up when there's not much, not many days left on the rest of the season. There we go. Let's get it back. Well, see, he's, he's going to run around seven pounds. I think I have another, another go in this swim. Um, you know what I was saying about I didn't like those roach because they were too small. I sort of changing my mind at the moment. I'm imagining those stick ups there are the other end of this huge tree here. So you've got to live dangerously, but it pays off big time sometimes. These small creeks. Some people hate the term creek. I just had another take, guys, and I've missed another one. And I've missed that one as well. So I'm guessing they might be small pike or perch or even chub. Got it on again, or it. I say it, I don't know what it is. The softest take you could ever... I wasn't even sure it was a fish, but it is zooming around there looking like a pike. It is a pike. Just nicked there. I wonder if that was the one was pinching all the baits off me. I hope he doesn't get tangled in the net too much. Oh, I keep tension on him there. Oh, still, buddy. Hook comes straight out. Wow, what a session. Seven hook now, four landed. I guess these are the size I keep missing. Guys, I had a follow across there. I'm sure I saw a decent sized fish following me. I've gone just to hold it in the bottom here. I've dropped it on the bottom to chip my real drag. And I'm sure I felt a little tap or tag, a tug, you know, or a take or something. Maybe not, maybe it's me. I just, I saw some colour in the water over there. I thought, that looks like something's following me. No. Oh, nice fish. Oh, <laughs> he followed me right in, took it there. That's what happened there. Oh, wow. Good one. Good one, good one, good one. Oh, nice fish. A nice fish. We just put a, I lost a set of gear in the tree over there. So I just got a fresh, nice, sharp hook, hopefully. It'll, it'll stay on. I thought that was what it was. I just saw a green colour behind the... Uh, behind the bait. It looks like a jumper to me. Well, well, well. All I've done is put a fresh bait, fresh rig, and just move down nearer that snag. Come on, babe. He's in. Oh, that might be. That might be fish of the trip. That's a nice one. He's definitely. He's definitely wanted that. He's gagged on that. It's weird because he didn't slash at it. He just. I just saw the colour in the water. Well, all these fish are coming pretty much on this same bit of stretch. Got lovely markings on them, especially this time of year. That's another fish up around the sevens, I guess. Wow, we am having a trip and a half. Look at that eye. He's looking at me. Now, let's get this back without... Here he is. Gone. Well, this swim must have a name. It's got an enormous willow there. Absolutely gargantuan sized willow. Hopefully it's not one of those cracked willows and it cracks and falls on my head because this is a very tasty looking swim. I'm thinking roach over there, if I was stick float fishing, and yesterday I blanked, so it's a couple of hours float fishing did me nothing. That's a nice pace along there and I'm thinking maybe a pike across the middle here. The way things are going, I wouldn't discount a take here. I'm going to try one close in first. A bit windy now, I've got a lot of rain coming in tonight, so that's the reason I've come is because the uh, river might colour up and that's the end of the pike fishing. 
might be a chance of Barbel or Chubb, but I mean, I'm new to the game here, new to the party, late to the party, that's a, that's a saying. Oh, I'm fancying right over there. About there. On that line, all the way down. I'll get about six cars in here. I'm hoping none of these big branches are in there too much. That's weird, that other swim, absolutely full of pike. And here you come to one here, looks equally pikey, and perhaps nothing at all. It tells me that other one must have a lot of fish in it to uh, feed the pike, you know, roach, dace, chub, stuff like that. The pike aren't there for nothing. Oh, what a cast, that deserves a fish, 100%. I've never done a lot of good pike fishing when it gets dark, you know, on the dusk. So I think with the sun going where it is at the moment, my I might have had the best of it. I've not even fished this place for a day yet or in the morning. I've only fished in the afternoon. Just a might got a ticket and as I've told you before, I'm not a club person at all, but maybe I'm maybe I'm changing. fishing like this and it's on the doorstep. That looks good along there. I think I'm going to come up and bump it. Everybody always thinks fishing is about casting and it's not. Fishing is about, it's not casting all the time. It's about fishing. That's what it's about. Fish can be down here equally as much as they can be over the far bank. I'm just bouncing it along the bottom there, close into the margins. Whoopsie, that was living dangerously. It's off. Uh, wind's coming up now, so it could be windy in the microphone. There's plenty of stick up stems here to snag on, but that's also a good place for a pike to hang out. It gives them some camouflage, so I'm just gonna live a bit dangerously here and see if there is anything at home. Going right in amongst the stems there. And especially if I can get down there, just on the back edge of that current there. No, that is the back end of a big stick. He's off, that was lucky. Just going a little bit closer. Oh guys, I'm out of bait. That's all there is to it. Um, eight pike, eight five as I say. Eight pike uh, hooked up and uh, five I've got. No more on the bottom end. The bottom stretch didn't seem so good. That top end seems to play. So brilliant. Um, gobsmacked to those little roach. <laughs> I've used a lot. Um, lost a few sets of gear, but it's the way it is. So thanks for watching. Totally awesome fishing show. Don't go away. I'm going to think of something else. Bound to be something to do with it a garage or a lawnmower or something. Don't go away, we'll see you in a minute. All right, hi there guys, just gonna go through some basic drop shotting setups, what you can purchase and what you can use. So, um, I'll start with the weights. There's a million different shapes and sizes in weights. They've generally got this teardrop sort of action to it so you pull the lead into it. I'll, have to, I'll open one, I'll show you the lot. Are they a metal one or are they? So these are all metal, yeah. Right, so here's the little teardrop shape bit on the end which is how you connect your weight. So I think the easiest bit, I'll show you on my diagram on it. Is that where they pinch the line in it? They pinch the line in that. So um, what is the, with is a drop shot that? rig, so this is so you can adjust your depth basically to how close you're going to run your, your lure to the bottom of the lake. So you can see, when you unwind one of these ready kits, you have your loop for attaching onto your main line. Then you've got your hook in the middle, which is always facing upwards. And then you have just like a straggly piece of line at the end, which is to connect your drop shot weight. Yep. So essentially you pull the line 
into this little teardrop shape, which traps it. Pinch it, yeah. It pinches it tight. So what I do is if I find a piece of line, I'll show you how to. Right, so we're just gonna pull this into the line just to show you how it comes on. So this would be the end of my drop shot line, and I'll pull. Let's just pull like and, and here, click, click in. Yeah. And then you can see that's pretty tight on there. Don't get me wrong, you do lose a few of these because they get stuck between a snag on the bottom. They take a bit of pulling. Let's see if we can get one to fall off. So it's quite tight, oh, you got but pressure. you can see if I'm it's if, if it was traps. Yeah, it's gonna go, yeah. So you do lose a few. But what that essentially says is you don't lose a, your jig or your jelly on the bottom, you yeah. just lose your weight and you have to start again. So different shapes. Some people prefer the pencil shape, some people prefer the ball lead. They also do a bit more like original Arlesley bomb sort of styles yeah. as well. Any reason for the long ones, the pencils? I think just the way they react when they drop through the water, they flutter about a bit. When you lift, oh, you think they, so, they yeah. drop different. So I think it gives you a different reaction to your actual lure. I've, your heard so, I've heard somebody once years ago tell Mike, you can let that fall down and if it's slightly silty, yep. just popping the lead from horizontal like that yeah, to, to, vertical, to, to vertical, flicks a bit of dust and then they the sediment and then they see the lure over the see top. See the lure over the top, yeah. It's just it's a distraction thing really. Again, fishing for predators, they are chasing prey, so yeah, any disturbance really. So that's a little drop shot kit by Fox. What you actually get in there is your drop shot weights in the middle. You get four little jigs to play with, which is like a little micro fry. And then on here is a spool. I'll show you that when I show you it. So you get, I think you get four rigs on the spool. Are they all the same weight or are they yeah, very weight? Yeah, so they're all the same. Um, oh, so you literally idea, yeah. undo a pin, unwind it, yeah. your hook's tied on. It is just nice and basic. So if you want to start a bit of drop shot fishing, I always suggest to most people in the shop, unless you're confident of tying your own stuff, which isn't hard, I can always show people as well, um, is to buy one of these kits. Literally. Yeah, it's done. Yeah, it's not a lot of money. By the time you buy the individual components, you'll spend more than what a kit is. So for you to try it out, just have a go with one of those, which is really good. Yeah. And then obviously we've got different types of hooks. You'll find most drop shot hooks have an outward turn eye because of the way it sits on the line. So you always have your hook facing upwards. Yeah. Um, so there's a couple of patterns. Uh, is there a reason for that? Uh, I think the way the hook's sitting upwards, if it was down and the fish were approaching over it, then generally your hook isn't sat in its best place for hooking. So sitting upwards, as they show on the on the picture, it's easy to show you the picture. Um, you can see it faces yes, upwards yeah. and it's just the way the jig sits on it. I think if that was facing down, I think it'd run different and you, your jig wouldn't use its tail and stuff like that as well when you're actually pulling on the line. Got it. But yeah, drop shot in, cheap, basic, easy way to go, lure fishing. You can have a small rod in your bag, literally a bit of braid on it, a spool of line and a handful of jigs and you can go fishing. You know, another thing not to mistake, which you might have done yourself, Graham, is doing the drop shot, but use a real worm rather than a, yeah. a, an artificial worm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It works. It still good. works, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, very good. So with the little patterns of fry, they do different tails. So that's not what they call a curly tail. Yeah. It gives you just a different motion through the water. Paddle tails seem to be really popular, which just vibrate really well when you pull them along through the water. And the thing is, they just hook them barely through the head, don't they? Literally just you nick them just through nick the end. Them. That's so they you are don't just to, on there. You don't have to thread it around like and a worm. And it's all about this jigging about and jiggling around. It's yeah, it's totally different. But it becomes very addictive. It's quick, easy fishing that you could do for a couple of hours at the end of the light, especially this time of year. You're active, and then as we all like buying lures and jellies and jigs because it's like a sweet shop for us fishermen. So it's always something different, yeah. Always something different. I mean, something even that's a tiny one. That one there you've got there. Yeah, the and some people are even doing even smaller than this now. They're doing. Um, it's your tungsten bead hook, a tungsten bead over the hook, and they're fishing these real, real micro grubs, as they call it, the size of a maggot almost. Oh, really? And literally jigging that along, and they catch lots of the smaller perch, but yeah. they're some beautiful fish. They're, real, they're nice real, fish yeah. real good methods of fishing to catch when it's really cold as well. On techniques, would you say margin fishing? Because if you cast out a long way, it's almost defeating the object of being it vertical, is. isn't it? It is. So you're vertical jigging basically the whole time. Your rod would be up and you just little jerks all the way back with the rod. Um, canal fishing is generally what it's based at. It does work well on a canal. You're fishing short. You're only fishing, you know, probably a couple of metres out, three metres out. And most yeah. of your bites on your drop shot, and as you probably know, where you're doing, is in the margin. It's in the margin, yeah. It's always at the edge. I've also seen 
the famed pencil hold being used. Yeah. Do you have to have the pencil hold rod? Is there a reason for that? Um, more no, sensitive? I mean, you know yeah, more sensitive. Like yeah, yeah, more sensitive as you can feel it all. But, I mean, I think it's go fishing and get your own method that works for you. You know, because you're watching the professional guys doing it yeah. and they do different things with it and you think, wow, why are they doing that? But yeah. you've got to do a bit of trial and error to find out what's reacting best with the fish. Gotcha. So. And rods and reels, I mean, it's something you can... Rods and reels, yeah. Do, do lightweight light jigs. Um, you do little small reels as well. So I'll show you a couple here we're doing. So that's one of our nice top-end reels, a Shimano Vanford. But very light, so you're very light sensitive. Um, obviously, that's more of the top-end. Oh, they are light, aren't they? Crikey. Very, very light. Very light. Very is, light. Yeah. So they're, they're taking what sort of diameter and uh, line? Diameter lines. So some people like to go really thin. When I'm drop shooting, I go to probably 10 or 12 pounds. People go to four, five pounds braid. In, 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 in braid, in braid yeah. in strain. But I, I find more susceptible to wind knots and things like that when you're lighter braids. Yeah. Um, I think just go with a. I prefer the eight strand braids because they're a bit smoother through the rings, but something between about 15, 12 to 15 pounds, I think, would get you started nicely when you're starting off without having it being too fine for, for knots. They're more budget ones, are they? Slightly. So I'm, I'm a bit shy. This, this was done by Corum, which is made by Preston Innovations, a big company. So Corum Snapper, it's a good range. That's your Shimano Vanford, which you fans of them will know what they are. And then that one's called a Shimano Nasky. And then I also get other cheaper versions of everything. Really. So and can you can you use mono as well? You can you use could mono because you're yeah. fishing close. Fishing close, but obviously as we all know, braid has minimal stretch. There's no stretch at all really, and basically it's just more sensitive to your fishing. These are like a cheap one I do by DAM, which has been what we've been selling a lot of this year. So they start at 1500 size, going up to a 4000. That's loaded with braid already. So it's got a 12 pounds braid on it, all ready to go. Uh, and they're 40 pounds, which is a lovely price to get you started. You know, you can yep. do it for cheaper than that as well, but if you wanted a new reel, that's uh, a good start. And this is one of my other most popular for the drop shot, and is a Daiwa Ninja 1500, which again, lovely little reel. Rods are then, what, rods, seven footers or something like so that? Far, so six, seven, and eight, really, yeah, not yeah. much. If you pan round over here, right? So we've got a range of rods in the rack of all different types, and if you look at the tips, we've got white tips, orange tips, there's a lot thinner one, so what have we got there? So that one is a, that was a Fox Warrior drop shotting rod, um, 2.4 metres, uh, and we're on a gram, so all these are done in grams when you're casting weights. I think your eyes might be better than mine, Graham. No, no chance, no chance, no. 4 to 17 grams, that's probably slightly heavier on the drop shotting side. Are they all going to be carbon? All carbon, um, cheaper stuff sometimes you get an old fiberglass or a composite, but majority of rods are carbon fiber. And how light is that? Very light. Oh my god, it's lovely. And that's, yeah. I'll show you a lighter one, Graham. So Savage Gear is another good brand we do a lot of. And then we get into like the micro fry rods. Oh, I'm gonna break them for you. So this is a Savage Gear SG2. This is a six foot rod, so nice and yeah. short. Naught to two grams. Weighs nothing, isn't it? So it weighs nothing. It's 138 centimeters. <laughs> I feel like you thought the other one was light. Oh, it's like a feather, yeah. It doesn't weigh a thing, but... Might as well see on the camera there, Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. but very yeah. fine for casting a very small jig. Because you will get the odd pike grab these lures, right? You will you, get you know? the odd pike. Generally, because you'll be fishing a fluorocarbon, if you catch a big pike and he rolls on you, you're more likely losing, but if you hook him in the scissors... You might get away, you might get lucky. away a bit landing, get lucky to land him, so... But, yeah, there, there's just a... A quick run through of some of the stuff you can get from the micro game lure rods, you know, all the way through. All the way, all the different makes you've got here. Yeah. So many, yeah. So uh, and they can come in and see you if you can. If they don't want to buy those packs, you can yeah. make them up yourself. You can make up yourself. So if you pay them around to here, Graham, I've got a few. We've got loads of new bits coming in in the next week because we've had a big sellout. But you've got like the little crayfish style ones, um, and you've got all these. These are all your drop shot in what they call craft dyeing minnow. Uh, yeah. different colours, patterns, and then maybe we'll talk with you one day is about these as well, like Cheb rig heads and the Texas yep. rigs as well, which you might have heard of, yep. with these little kits that give you everything inside them to, to make them up. And uh, the crayfish wise, we got loads and loads of these red signals, you think they're going to eat the small ones, so that's yes. why crayfish lures are going to be popular, yeah, I think and they so. bump them on the bottom then. They bump them on the bottom, uh, the perch are very predatory to the crayfish as we know, so um, yeah, I think, again, it's that same thing with lure fishing, have a nice little selection with you, you never know on the day which one's going to be the correct one. 
Lovely job. Thank you very much, Dave Grant. They can pop in and see you if they want some information. No problem. Thank you very much.